welcome back to Bargaining in War. In the previous lecture, we saw how increasing the cost of fighting can increase the probability of war when one actor does not know how its opponent values the stakes. What we're going to see now is how that counterintuitive relationship only applies to the interior solution of the game. If we instead venture into the corner solution, where only the high valuation type has a positive value for war, and the low valuation type has a negative value for war, the counterintuitive relationship falls apart. Increasing the cost will decrease the probability of war, as one might initially suspect. Showing this is going to be a two-step process. In this lecture, we're going to solve for that corner solution, and in the next lecture, we'll take the comparative static like we normally would. Let's get to it. The game, to recap, is a three-step process. Nature begins by drawing B's type as either a VB low valuation type or a VB prime high valuation type. The low valuation type occurs with probability Q, and the high valuation type occurs with probability 1 minus Q. This is private information to B. Only B knows its valuation. A is in the dark. And in the dark, A demands a value x, which is constrained between 0 and 1. If you remember back to our initial lecture on corner solutions, having a constraint or a bound on how much A can demand is important in these corner solutions, and that's going to recur here. B, which again is fully informed, sees the demand and accepts or rejects it, ending the game. What separates here from the previous time we solved this game is that we're looking into the corner solution. Specifically, we're going to assume that the low valuation type has a negative war payoff. That low valuation's war payoff is 1 minus P minus CB over VB. We're assuming that that is negative. We're going to keep the high valuation types war payoff positive in contrast. Let's go ahead and solve this game. This is going to be, in some sense, easier than the last time, not only because we have the experience from before, but in fact the solution gets a little bit simpler due to the fact that the low valuation type has a negative war payoff. Like what we always do, we start at the bottom and work our way up. We have two different types of B we have to work through, so we have to think about whether the low valuation type is going to accept or reject a demand, and then think about whether the high valuation type is going to accept or reject a demand. So starting with that low valuation type, we have a war payoff of 1 minus P minus CB over VB. And so the demand it's going to get is 1 minus X, so it is willing to accept A's demand and receive the remainder as long as that value is less than its war payoff, which is 1 minus P minus CB over VB, like always, once again. And what do we see here? Well, if that low valuation type has a negative payoff, which is true right here, then any demand that A makes will leave a remainder that is acceptable to the low valuation type. Why is that? Well, x is constrained between 0 and 1. So the way that this left-hand side gets minimized is if A demands the entire pi. If that's the case, then what we're looking at is 0 greater than 1 minus p minus cb over vb. But again, we know that this left-hand side is negative. So that relationship holds. So the vb type accepts I will spell accept correctly, all demands. The VB type has a very simple strategy. The VB prime type is going to be a little bit more complicated, but we've actually seen it before. So in fact, it's going to be exactly the same as it has previously, where the VB prime type has a value of 1 minus x if it accepts, and if it rejects, it gets 1 minus p minus cb over vb prime. So solving for x, we get x less than or equal to p plus cb over vb prime. So the vb prime type accepts x less than or equal to p plus cb over vb prime. 
Now, the reason that this game is going to ultimately be simpler in comparison to the interior solution is because there are only two different types of demands that we need to sort out for figuring out whether A is going to make one demand or another demand. So to recap where we've been on this game so far, we have solved for B's accept or reject decision. All we need to do is figure out which demand of A is maximizing A's payoff. So what value of X should A choose to maximize its utility under the circumstance? Well, if we think about the options that A has, we draw this out as different X possibilities. There's a cut point of P plus CB over VB prime. And any demand less than that is going to be accepted by both types. Both accept. Why is that? Well, the VB type is accepting all demands and the VB prime type is accepting as long as it's to the left of it, inclusive of that cut point of P plus CB over VB prime. If A were to demand anything strictly greater than that, well, again, the VB type is still accepting because it's accepting all demands, but now the VB prime type will be rejecting because that is exceeding the threshold. So VB type accepts and VB prime type rejects. You'll remember that when we did the same sort of figure for the interior solution, there was a third possibility where A could demand so much that both types reject. Here, that's not possible. Here, if A demands the entire pie for itself, that low valuation type interprets its costs of war as being so large that it is willing to give up the entire good, allow A to take everything, accept nothing, just to avoid fighting a war. So as a consequence of that, we only have to sort through two different sets of possible demands. And we can do that very quickly and narrow it down to just two possibilities. So imagine that A wants to make a demand that both types accept. Well, A's utility for that is just X. This is its utility for making an acceptable demand to both types. Whatever the amount that it's demanding is what it's getting. So if this is our X here, think about why that can't be optimal. Well, it's the same logic that we explored previously when we were solving this game in the interior solution. If A were to demand some epsilon amount more, just some slightly smaller amount that's still less than P plus CB over VB prime, then it's getting a little bit more for itself. But that logic holds all the way through. You can keep adding epsilon, keep adding epsilon, and so forth. Where it stops is at the cut point. If A is demanding P plus CB over VB prime, if it tries demanding anything extra, well, suddenly that's going to result in the VB prime type rejecting. So where does that take us? The optimal safe demand is X equal to P plus CB over VB prime. None of these things here can be optimal. The cut point still might be, but anything less than that is not. All right, what if A wants to make a risky demand instead, some quantity greater than P plus CB over VB prime? Well, here, its utility is going to be a little bit more complicated. With probability Q, it's facing the VB type, and so the VB type is going to accept, and A will get the demand that it made, which is X. With the remaining probability, which is one minus Q, that's the portion of the time it's facing the VB prime type, that VB prime type is going to reject and A is going to get its war payoff, which is P minus CA over VA. Let's think about why this demand here is always going to be worse than this demand here. Well, in both cases, with probability Q, the demand is accepted, and with probability one minus Q, the demand is rejected. The only difference is that in the second case, we're adding an epsilon to that X amount. The amount that A is able to keep for itself goes up by a little bit. So we would never want to make this demand. But we would never want to make this demand either because we can keep increasing it and keep getting the VB type to still accept while still having the VB prime type reject. All the way until we get to the boundary, which is right here at one. 
In this case, A is demanding everything that it can. It cannot demand any more. And so it can't increase this X quantity any further. So what that means is that the optimal risky demand is X equal to one. We have now ruled out everything in here and we're just left with the two possibilities, the cut point and demanding everything. So with that, all we have to do now is look at A's utility for making the safe demand and look at its utility for making the risky demand and see when A prefers one to the other. So specifically, A prefers the risky demand if its utility for the risky demand here is larger than its utility for the safe demand, which is this. The only thing we have to do is take x equal to 1 and substitute it into here, because that is the optimal risky demand. So we're just going to replace this x with a value of 1. So the value, the utility for making the risky demand in expectation is q times 1 plus 1 minus q times p minus ca over VA, and that needs to be greater than A's utility for making the safe demand, and that optimal safe demand is P plus CB over VB prime. Well, what do we do from here? Same thing as usual. We try multiplying everything out, see how this thing can simplify, and as usual, we'll put this in terms of Q, that prior belief about whether B is the high or low value type. So if we're doing that cleaning up of the equation, let's go ahead and multiply everything out. We got to foil this part here. So we have a P and a negative CA VA and a negative QP and a positive QCA over VA. Nothing on the right side to simplify because there's nothing multiplied there. And we do see that it simplifies a small bit. We have a P here and a P here. So let's go ahead and group terms. Let's put everything with Q on one side and everything without Q on the other side. Here on the left-hand side, we have three terms with Q. So let's keep everything with Q there and then just move the CAVA to the other side. And if we do that, we get Q minus QP plus QCA over VA greater than CA over VA plus CB over VB prime. Well, now to solve for Q, we just need to put everything here as a single Q by itself, undistribute the Q essentially. So Q times the quantity one minus P plus CA over VA. Make that greater than CA over VA plus CB over VB prime. Well, one minus P is some quantity that's between zero and one. CA and VA is a positive value. So when we divide by this, we're not going to have to flip the inequality or anything like that. And so to solve this, we just put it on the other side and then we're done. One minus P plus CA over VA. Remember that Q is the prior belief that A has that B is the low valuation type. So if we just plot this real quick, and we're going to be using this graph next time, we have a cut point of CA over VA plus CB over VB prime divided by 1 minus P plus CA over VA. This is a plot of Q. If Q is larger than that, then we have the risky demand being made and if Q is less than that, we have the safe demand. And the logic, the intuition is just as it was before. When Q is relatively large, then A feels safe making the gamble of trying to make an onerous demand, in this case, the entire pie, banking on the fact that it's very likely to be facing that low valuation type, which is going to accept. And in contrast, if Q is relatively low, it's not worth taking that risk. It's better to make the safe demand. So that wraps up this first half of working through the intuitive result within the corner solution. We have now found the solution to that game. And in the next lecture, what we're going to explore is how increasing B's cost for war increases or decreases the probability of war. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time.
Take care.